Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Grass Garage. Today, we're going to be putting a Mark 7.5 Golf R exhaust in this 2018 162 TSI Tiguan. G'day viewers, welcome to a special video on Grouse Garage. This one's a tutorial video on how to fit a Golf R exhaust into a Tiguan. There are plenty of videos on YouTube that show you what it sounds like to have a Golf R exhaust in a Tiguan, but there are no videos on YouTube that shows you how to put a Golf R exhaust into a Tiguan. So that's why I created this video for you. I've split it into seven parts and you can jump ahead at any point in time using the links below. Part one, removing the fake exhaust tips. The first thing I've got to say about doing this job is be prepared to get dirty. When you're laying on your back, shoving screwdrivers up in behind that rear bumper and pulling on the fake exhaust tip, you're gonna get covered in dirt. So be prepared for that. I wasn't, I'm telling you, be prepared for it. To remove the fake exhaust tips, you've got to undo some clips. Not as easy as it sounds. The white arrows there show you the clips that you've got to undo. Don't worry about these ones here. They simply hold the chrome trim onto the fake exhaust outlet. The clips highlighted with the white arrows are the ones you need to undo. This slide here gives you a better idea of how to undo these clips. The white arrows are pointing to this part here on the underside. You've got to get a flat blade screwdriver in there and bend that down to release that clip. That is how you undo them. Don't worry about this part on the top here. You just simply need to bend those tabs down on the underside. This is a photo of my fake exhaust tip removed from my TIG. Gives you a better idea of how these clips hold it in place. This is the part that I just said you need to bend down with your flat blade screwdriver. Once you figure that out, the job becomes a lot easier. The next tip I've got for you is to use two flat blade screwdrivers at a time. When you shove one in like that and a second in like that, you have a better chance of when you push on that fake exhaust tip of releasing those clips. If you just do one at a time, it will not be enough. I battled for 45 minutes on the first one until I figured this out. So that's a good tip of using two screwdrivers at a time. The next tip I recommend is to start on the inner part of your rear bar and work your way out. So where that arrow is there is the center of the rear of the car and you start by releasing those clips and work your way across, releasing those clips and then you can see here that the fake exhaust tip is partly released, um, still held in on this side over here. So start in the center and work your way towards the outside, shoving two screwdrivers in and giving it a push from behind. This photo here is, for, is to show you how to release that from the bumper bar. Don't worry about laying underneath and pulling it towards you. You need to shove screwdrivers in, get out from under the car and give it a good push from the back towards the front of the car. That's how I got these out. Initially, I was laying underneath, shoving screwdrivers in and trying to pull the fake tip towards me. That's how I got covered in all that dirt. So shove your screwdrivers in, get out from underneath, push from the back, and you'll soon find that you'll be releasing them really quickly. On the driver's side in Australia, of course, there's some clips and wiring that you need to be mindful of. These two clips here are for the um, boot release kick sensor and they are actually clipped onto the fake exhaust tip so you've got to undo those before you start pushing and releasing that fake exhaust tip also on the driver's side you've got this wiring loom here that actually sits up above the fake exhaust tip once you remove that fake exhaust tip that wiring loom just dangles down and needs to be secured 
you can easily hold that dangling wiring loom up underneath by zip tying it to the wiring loom that is held further up underneath that rear bar. You'll be able to see that when you lay on your back and look up underneath. So zip tie the loose one to the secured one. And after about an hour, give or take a little bit, your fake exhaust tips are gone. The first one took me about 45 minutes to figure everything out that I've just shown you now. The second one, once I knew exactly what I was doing, 15 minutes. All in all, this job probably took me about two hours from when I jacked the car up to when I finished sweeping up all the dirt and everything that had come out with the exhaust tips as well. So give yourself a couple of hours to do the job. Follow the steps that I've just shown you. You won't have a problem. Part two, the Golf R exhaust. Here's a quick little video to show you the differences between the standard TIG exhaust and the Golf R exhaust and how you need to modify this to fit your TIG. Here's my Golf R exhaust. This one's out of a Mark 7.5. The Mark 7 and Mark 7.5 are pretty much exactly the same. There is one key difference that I am led to believe. This one has the actuators in. I'm told that the 7.5 with actuators in are in an open position. The valves are in an open position. Take a piece of wire, shove it up the pipe, keeps on going, which means those valves are open. I'm told that the Mark 7, when the actuators are in, the valves are closed. Not 100% sure on that, but certainly this is a Mark 7.5. The actuators are in, the valves are open. I'm going to leave it exactly like that. I've actually polished the body of that muffler up. Uh, what I used was this here, polishing wheel. Um, I reckon that came up really good. Looks better than new. Some other differences. Uh, this inlet pipe here for the muffler on the Golf R exhaust, it's two and three quarter inch or thereabouts. It's not even round either. It's actually kind of like a squashed oval shape, which is quite strange. The TIG pipe um, is two and a half inch or thereabouts. So you've got a difference. I'm actually going to cut it here and weld my TIG pipe onto the muffler at this point here. The shape of that pipe on the Golf R exhaust to the TIG, completely different. You will not use any of that. This shape here is completely different because this leads back to a resonator, which is a totally different shape. The outlet on the resonator on the R is on the side. On the TIG, it comes out straight. So this whole pipe is a different shape. So you won't use that. Cut it off. Weld your TIG pipe on. Then you've got your Golf R exhaust with quad tips. Now that you know the key differences between the R and the TIG exhaust, let's have a look at how you modify this. First thing, we need to chop that engine pipe and weld your TIG pipe on right here to the muffler. That should not be too hard at all. Next thing we've got to do, could be a little tricky, is extend these tips from the muffler to your rear bar. They're in a different position in the Golf R to what they will be in the TIG. I'm going to cut mine right there and right here after the actuator valve and put extension pieces in. I've got a couple of spare pieces of exhaust pipe here. That's a 304 stainless. That's exactly what I'm going to use. If I cut it here, weld a section in there, and then add this piece to the end of it. You've got to do that four times over, and that's exactly how you bring these out in line with your bumper. I'm going to show you how to do that in a little while in this video. Part three, removing the stock exhaust. Removing the stock exhaust from your TIG is actually really easy. You've got to release a bracket on the driver's side and the same on the passenger side. Don't worry about trying to release this rubber exhaust hanger because they're really hard to get to get off. You want to undo this bolt here. It's a 13 mil and on the passenger side it's again the same, a 13 mil bolt. Undo both of those and in the center of your TIG you've got another, you guessed it, 13 mil bolt. Undo that there don't worry about um, trying to release that exhaust hanger because you'll battle with that all day and the last part you need to do to get your standard exhaust out is to undo this band clamp you guessed it 13 mil 13 mil undo those gently push a flat blade screwdriver into the band clamp to release it and then you'll be able to slide it forward and just let it sit there so you don't lose it 
your rear muffler is in that direction there, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at. Next, I'm gonna show you a quick video of the technique I used for removing the rear muffler. And just pay attention to what I'm doing with my knees in this video. I actually um, supported the muffler with my knees. Once I had undone those 13 mil bolts on the rear and everything else, of course, I then lowered it down with my knees and dragged it out to the back. Um, I found that quite easy to do, to be honest, and um, let's take a look at that then now. Part four, cutting and welding. This is the scary part. This is where you take a perfectly good Golf R exhaust and chop it to pieces. Let's have a look at how and where you need to cut this exhaust. The first cut you've got to make is right here. This is the inner tip, and I recommend you cut the inner one in that position there. This picture is of the outer tip, and I recommend you cut that one right there. Here is your valve and actuator. I personally decided to leave that in and make my cut there. By doing that, this piece and this piece are exactly the same length, and it makes cutting and welding in your extensions a lot easier. Let's take a look now at how I cut this up. Once you've done all your cuts, that's what you end up with, chopped. Part five, test fit, very important. Test fit your Golf R muffler. Make sure it lines up nicely with your existing Tiguan exhaust pipe. Make sure the angle is correct and the length is right and then tack weld that in place. Once you've test fitted your Golf R exhaust, you've got to cut and weld your extension pieces for your quad tips. This is just a rough guide. These are the measurements that I figured worked for me. May not be the exact measurements that you use, but this will help you in 
determining how much material you need to order and how long you need to cut these or roughly cut them before you do your test fitting. On the outer extension, on the outer tips, I had 140 mil length of two and a quarter inch stainless pipe. And on the inner extension, I've got a 160 mil length of two and a quarter inch stainless steel pipe. Once again, these are just rough estimates for the lengths that you will need. It'll help you in ordering your exhaust pipe and it will help you in cutting it to then test fit and you may have to trim a little bit here and there. Let's have a look at how I welded it up and test fit it and tacked it into place. Once you've finished aligning your extended tips and tacked them into place, that's exactly how it'll look. I've finished one side there. The process you just saw in the video, I repeated on the other side. Again, I'm just tack welding into place. Um, I found it easier to tack and align and then remove the entire muffler and weld it all together with it on the ground, which I'm going to show you in a little bit. Part six, the final weld and installation. This is the exciting part. Once you've got everything um, lined up and tacked, remove from the car, weld it all together and reinstall and that's where the fun starts. Once you've welded everything together, this is what you end up with. Here you're looking at the passenger side. You can see my two extension pieces there. The longer one is on the inside, the shorter one is on the outside. These two pieces here should be exactly the same length. That's the passenger side. Here is the driver's side. Again, exactly the same. You've got the longer piece on the inner, the shorter piece on the outer, I've left my valves and actuators in place uh, and they are open. So I've got all four open on my exhaust. Here's a picture of my completed Golf R muffler with extended tips ready to install into my TIG. Very, very exciting. Um, this is where the fun starts. You, um, once you've done all this hard work, and it is hard work, um, that's when you get to install it and hear the difference this is it installed in my car this is the driver's side you can see the polished muffler looks really nice here's my extension pieces here and here here's the existing tips um, it certainly makes a big difference to the visuals of the car
And here is the passenger side. Once again, very nicely polished muffler, extension piece, extension piece, original tips here in place. Um, line up really nicely with the rear bar as well. I have I have them um, staggered a little bit there. I didn't make them uh, sit in line. Um, how you fit those though is completely up to you, but that's what I chose to do there. Here's a uh, complete shot of the um, Golf R muffler with extensions here, here, here and here. That may help you if you're trying to visualize this yourself in your car or if you're trying to figure out the geometry of the modification, that's, um, that photo there is hopefully going to help you out. Here's a look at the rear of the TIG, it's still up on stands. You can see the muffler there. Um, so in certain um, situations, you will be able to see that underneath the car, all polished. Um, quad tips. Once you start looking at a TIG with quad tips and comparing to a TIG with fake tips, there's really a big difference, I think. Um, I, at first, I didn't think it was so bad having the fake tips, but after I started looking at some pictures and now I look at my own, it's definitely a mod worth doing. Here's a before shot with my fake tips. Again, like I just said, you get used to seeing that, so you really don't think there's anything wrong with that. Once you start seeing TIGs with quad tips, you really know that these fake tips are a big no. Here's my TIG with the quad tips. Huge difference, I think. Really, visually, is, um, is makes, makes a big difference visually. Sound is, well, we'll find out what the sound is in just a moment. But here, tick, tick. Awesome mod, looks fantastic. Part seven, how does it sound? That is the ultimate question. And there's no really, there's no real definite answer for that either. How does it sound? I left the resonator in, in my TIG. I didn't want it to sound loud and obnoxious. I wanted it to be subtle. I wanted it to be a little bit more than stock. And that's exactly what I got. I am thrilled with the sound. If you want something really loud and raspy and you want DSG farts that are like gunshots, then you will probably want to do a res delete as well. If you want a TIG that sounds better than stock and keeps the wife and family happy, then putting a Golf R exhaust in and leaving your resonator in is the mod for you. I'm really pleased with how it sounds. In fact, I'm wrapped. I've got a short video comparison now showing before and after, so let's take a listen and you be the judge. There you have it guys, how to fit a Golf R exhaust into a Tiguan. I showed you how to do it, I showed you how it sounded, and if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, and thanks for watching.